Welcome everybody to another uh, deep view. We're now calling these Tuesday tutorials where we walk you guys through uh, key aspects of the program deep view and uh, hopefully get you guys up and running as quickly as possible so you can uh, find the most value in deep view and learn all the uh, nice features that we've built in. So today we'll be focused on uh, deep lists um, as well as a, a few other kind of uh, related features. Um, so we'll be talking about how to create a new deep list, how to manage a single deep list, add symbols, take them away. Um, and also uh, there's a few things in screener that's related uh, that we'll get into. But just starting in the screener, uh, we'll show how to add stocks from a particular screen, uh, create a new deep list from the screener and all that. So right now I'm in the deep view universe screen. We're on the screener module. And what you want to do, for instance, when you're going through names, either on uh, during your daily routine or weekly routine, you find stocks that you like, you would just kind of check them as you're going through the results. And then we've got this plus icon right here. Clicking that, you can either add the symbols to an existing screen, um, or you can actually create a whole new deep list from this here. So you can see all the deep lists if you scroll here that I currently have created in the platform. Uh, but you can also, of course, create a new deep list here. And we'll go ahead and name this tutorial and nine five so let's go ahead and create that and let's go ahead and click plus again and there you go there is tutorial nine five there's zero stocks in there but when we click that uh, you can see there's a confirmation me confirmation message and those stocks have now been added to that deep list uh, now you can of course continue to go on and, and add more stocks as you go we'll go press plus again there's three stocks down here and we'll add those as well. So that's kind of that workflow, creating a deep list right from the screener, and then using the bulk selection tools uh, to add symbols to that list. And of course, we're gonna dive into the actual module and talk about how to add symbols from that itself. Um, but first, I do wanna highlight kind of special deep lists within Deep View that we have built in the platform uh, that kind of add additional functionality as well as help keep you organized uh, throughout the day and it's really helpful. You might notice that around the logo of some of the stocks, there is a, a color band here. We've got teal over here. And this signifies that this stock, for instance, DLO, is on my teal deep list. And these are special target lists. And we've got five of them of different colors uh, that you can use for any purpose. And what you're able to do in Deep View is click the around the symbol of any stock, click this and then quickly assign it a different color, red, yellow, uh, teal, blue, or purple. Um, and you can quickly assign this one to the purple group. You can also switch it to the red and uh, go ahead and confirm that, move it to the red one. Um, and you're also able to click this, use the drop-down menu. And once again, either you know unspecify it from a target list or add it to a specific one. And you can see the names of my deep list, how I use them. Um, over here. And we'll get into a little bit more about how to use these target lists. Uh, Tyler does it differently than me. And kind of the purpose is, again, it's added functionality that allows you to customize deep view and make your routines more efficient. So quickly, if, you know, uh, I want to add, I noticed that ARY, for instance, meets my uh, criteria for being a leader, I just go ahead and quickly assign it to that leadership list. And it's very fast and easy in, in just a few clicks. So that's a little bit about adding stocks to a deep list in the screener. And let's go ahead and dive right into the deep list module, uh, unless I'm forgetting something, Tyler, uh, before we get going. But uh, anything else that you want to emphasize? No, I think that's uh, it's a really great start. Um, and uh, like Richard said, I, I use the flags a little bit differently, the, uh, the color coding, but uh, I'll cover sort of how I use that to stay organized a little bit more uh, towards the end. Yeah. So let's go ahead and focus. We'll come back to the target list, but let's go ahead and focus on this deep list that we created in the screener. Uh, you can see that these are the names that are currently on this list. And say we want to edit the names on this list or add additional names to this list. What you'd want to do is click this plus button right here, and it brings up um, the symbols currently in the list, and you can easily search for another stock. Let's go ahead and add Tesla give it a check and there you go it's now on the deep list and it's also uh, really easy to copy and paste symbols into this so let's go ahead and write in the chat right here 
Uh, give me a few names that uh, you'd like to see added to this list. Give me, let's do three or four here. Okay, UPSTLI, cool, cool. Uh, so I'm actually, uh, the chat's over on this computer, this is over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, let's see, how should I do this? I'll go ahead and open up, oh, there we go. I'll open up the chat here, perfect. So uh, type, type in one message, a few symbols, type NVIDIA, IOT, Amazon, and there we go, okay. IOT, PAN, W, and LI. Perfect, so I've copied a few symbols in here. I'll go ahead and do Command V. And you can see these were the automatic symbols that were added uh, from that string. And we'll go ahead and make sure those are checked and click Add. And there you go, they're automatically added to the deep list right here. So that's a quick and easy way. If, for instance, you see a list posted on Twitter or elsewhere on the web, uh, you can easily uh, bring them into Deep View. Uh, and say you want to edit the names on this list, you can either click this plus sign and you know x them out let's get rid of li and update or you can of course use the bulk selection tools here and either delete we'll do that here's a confirmation message um, or also if you use the bulk selection tools you can copy it to uh, your clipboard or add it to a different uh, deep list if you'd like to also if you'd like to copy all the symbols in a list you can click this handy button right here Again, these same options pop up if you'd like to do that, uh, but you can also go ahead and um, export these either to Twitter, to your clipboard, CSV, Excel, um, and uh, you've got all those options available to you. Now, I know I ran through that pretty quickly, uh, so I want to slow down a little bit. And, and Tyler, anything you want to reemphasize about managing your specific deep list, adding symbols, deleting symbols, anything that uh, you found a lot of people um have a little bit of difficulty with when they first get started no um, i'm glad that you, you covered the uh, the copy paste function um it's super straightforward and makes bringing lists from other places right into deep view there is no sort of complicated importing and making sure you know files are the right file type or anything like that it's strictly just copy and paste the tickers deep view will figure it out and give you the list and then you can just quickly add them um, it, it really speeds things up in bringing uh, bringing lists in from, from other platforms or from Excel, as an example. Yeah, so from Excel, uh, basically, if you've got a column that's just symbols, you'd want to highlight that column, command C, uh, you know, what, what if you're on Mac, PC, whatever, copy those symbols in that column. And then again, you just want to go ahead and paste that in here and DP will figure it out, like you said. Also, when you share to Twitter, uh, we automatically add cache tags for you. So that's quite nice. That's a nice handy feature as well. Um, and let's see if there's any relevant messages here in the chat that I should be aware of. Um, screen there. Okay, cool. Nothing super pressing here. So that's it when it comes to an existing deep list and managing stuff in there. Um, let's go ahead and create a completely fresh deep list in deep view and uh, talk through how to manage that one and add your initial group of symbols, which is pretty much what we already went over, but it's always good uh, to reemphasize. So in order to create a new deep list, you'd want to go to this drop down, drop down arrow over on the right hand side, give this a click and then create a new deep list. Uh, let's go ahead and name this Tyler just cause. And you can see we've now got that created. It shows up here on the left-hand side. And if we give this a click, you can see there's no symbols currently in here. Uh, so what you want to do to add symbols to this list is you can either click this button or this button. They'll bring up the same um, pop-up that we used before. And let's go ahead and add Tesla, Amazon, and Tyler, since it's your deep list, give me, give me one or two extra names to bring on here. Uh, let's put uh, UPST since we were talking about it earlier. Uh, what else? IONQ. I think I people have been watching. Yeah, um, sounds good. What else is out there? That's good enough, I think. That's probably and good that, enough. That proves the point. Yep. And uh, taking a step back and just looking at the deep list module, I should have done this from the beginning. When you navigate here, you'll notice that the deep list that you have already created and we have some that are created for you are in these tabs up here and are very easily accessible so for instance if i want to go to my daily focus list 
uh, list, I just give that a click. I can also scroll back and forth. And on Windows, it would be a shift and then scroll bar, if, if, if I'm correct. Tyler, I'm currently on a Mac. Uh, so it's really nice and easy to quickly navigate between uh, deep lists here. Uh, you just basically click the tab you want. Um, and uh, that's always a very handy feature. Uh, you can also go ahead and rename this. So I'm going to go ahead and rename Tyler to Richard. I'll take control of this one here. And that's even true for the target list. So let's come back to the special list that exist here in deep view that are your target list. You can call them color list if you'd like. Uh, these are the ones that are red, yellow, uh, teal, blue, and purple. Uh, so these uh, by default are named those colors. Um, I've changed the names to kind of suit the purpose that I use them for. So the red list, I set this as my kind of daily focus list. Uh, the yellow list is my weekly focus list. And this wide list is kind of, you know, my universe for that week. So even wider than my weekly focus list. So it's really handy to navigate back and forth between these um, throughout the week. And I'll move stocks around uh, depending on, on price action. Then I use my blue list to kind of designate as my leadership list, the stocks that I deem kind of the leaders. And then lastly, I've got a uh, thematic ETF list, which kind of helps me track rotation. I like to sort this by price percent change today. You can see what's moving up and down as well as uh, volume coming in. So that's kind of my system for using uh, these colored lists. Um, I'll, I'll ask Tyler just a second how he uses it, but the, the possibilities here are kind of endless. What it does is it allows you to categorize certain stocks and when you're running a new screen or uh, you're looking at another deep list, you can quickly see, you know, if you've got your weekly focus list, you've got a bunch that are in gold. Uh, when you run a screen and you see a gold stock, you know it's on your weekly focus list, so it stands out. Uh, for instance, another idea is for every stock that has triple digit earnings growth or has an earning surprise of plus 200%, you could put that on your blue list instead of using it as a leadership list. And then every time you run a screen and you see a stock uh, has you know blue around its logo, uh, you would automatically know, even without looking at the fundamental growth here, that it has standout earnings growth or an earnings surprise. Uh, so it's, it's kind of helpful. It's just another visual cue. And as we mentioned, it's really easy to uh, switch between lists and uh you know rearrange these so uh tyler uh, do you want to talk about a little bit about how you use these five lists sure so i i use them a little bit differently so i use one of the colored lists so i'll just use the teal colored one for example um i've got that one renamed as focus um so that's names that are actionable those are the ones i'm looking at when the market opens on any given day <clears throat> and i have those ones uh flagged so when i'm doing my sort of routine in the evenings and I see something that looks like immediately actionable for the next day, I can just flag it in the teal color and it automatically puts it on my focus list for the next day. So that's how I use one of them. Um, I use them also for a bit more of a longer term um, strategy that I have um, and that I use mostly ETFs for. So I have a huge list of ETFs that I use. <clears throat> and then um, in that list, I will go through that big ETF list and I will use the color coded um, flags to mark ones that are either already in a stage two uptrend or are about to move into stage two. I'll use a different color for that. So I still have one big long list of ETFs, but I can quickly scroll through. I think there's probably 80 or 90 ETFs in that list, but I can quickly scroll through and see which ones are in stage two already just based off the colored flag and which ones are about to move into stage two. And when they do, I'll change them to the other list, the other color, because um, it gives me a really good sort of take on rotation, where things are in the market, um, if there's lots of stage two um, uptrends happening um, or not. Um, so it just gives you a really good snapshot of sort of where things are on a broad perspective. So that that's the other way that um, that I use them. And then the third way is, is very similar to Richard, where on the weekend routine where I'm looking at a longer, bigger, wider um, screening routine on the weekend, I will use that um, a fourth list in my screener to just quickly flag things as I'm going through that I want to look at in more detail. And then I will go to that color coded list that, you know, on a Sunday night might have 
you know, 20 or 30 names on it that I've flagged through my weekend routine. And then I'll go through and start closing those out and getting rid of them as I do sort of more detailed analysis on the chart and then either move them to my focus list or a different watch list. So um, I use it both for marking sort of stage two uptrends or things that are about to move into that um, for my focus list. And then for sort of the funnel system of getting from a screener down to a wider watch list and then down to a, a focus list. Yeah, perfect. So again, you know, however you want to use these, you can. Um, I saw uh, a request uh, of, of more colors. We'll look into that in the future. Um, you know, it's just another way to stay organized and speed up your workflows. That's kind of where, what we're thinking. That's our goal uh, with these deep lists. And I saw a question about how to rename them. If you hover over to the right side of whatever list you're on, there's three dots that pop up. If you give that a click, uh, you can go ahead and click rename, and then you can rename this red list to whatever you'd like to. And the same with uh, the other colored list. Colored list. So uh, looking over here, we've also got a few other uh, pre-built lists here in DeepView. Again, designed to speed up your workflow. Uh, we've got a favorites list here, um, which I per personally use as my current portfolio. Uh, we've got the universe list. So this is really special and can save you a lot of time. Uh, this basically contains all the stocks that are in that are from all all the other lists set up. So it's kind of your universe and uh, this is separate from the deep view universe screen again i want to make that clear uh, this looks at all your other watch lists takes all those symbols puts it in, into one watch list and removes all the duplicates that's what this does uh, the deep view universe screen is a screen that has certain criteria so they're completely separate uh, then also over on the right hand side we've got an alerts watch list which basically contains uh you know all the alerts that you have set uh, you've got all the functionality of the alerts module where you can toggle things on and off. You can sort by different columns, um, all of that definitely really useful. So we've kind of built these in to speed up your workflows. Uh, and, you know, the universe list in particular, it allows you to, uh, you know, put in all your sources of information into one. And then you have only have to go through a lot of symbols once and, and flag the ones you want uh, to move to your focus list or however you like to stay organized. Um, so let's see. Um, also, uh, going back to this drop down arrow, if you give this a click, uh, you can go ahead and search for a deep list if you'd like to. Uh, so I don't know, we'll type in A, you can see all the ones that have A in it. it you know, it's just another way to find a list if you have a lot more lists than I do. Uh, this is also, of course, scrollable. Uh, you've got these same three dots where you can rename them if you would like to. You can sort it from A to Z here if you would like, um, or Z to A. And again, you've got the functionality of this is where you create a new deep list. Um, now, one more thing we wanted to cover in today's webinar, this will be a pretty quick one, is you're able to automatically save the live results of a screen as a deep list. So to do that, um, what you want to do is go back to the screener, select the screen that you would like to save as an automatic deep list. And in the drop down menu, either if it's a screener or your save screen, let's go over to screener presets. Let's go down to deep view. And let's say I always want to have a watch list full of, um, let's do, yeah, deep view. Well, that's going to be a little bit confusing with the universe list in this. So let's do pure momentum. Let's say I always want to have a deep list that contains the live screen results of pure momentum. What you want to do is favorite it by clicking the start. And you can see the deep list is created successfully. And in order to undo that, what you'd want to do is unclick that star. That's how you would remove it from your deep list. But now going over to deep list, we've automatically got a pure momentum watch list that has the live results of that screen. So again, this is really handy uh, during your weekend routine. Uh, if you want to keep everything organized, uh, you can have a deep list dedicated to a particular screen result, and then you don't have to keep going back and forth between screens and watch lists uh, and do all that. So uh, that's pretty much the last key feature that we wanted to highlight. Um, I think this is a great time to uh, cut over to some questions if you have them about deep lists. But uh, before I do that, Tyler, anything you want to reemphasize about uh, using deep lists or anything I may have forgotten? No, oh, that, that was really great, Richard. It was, I think you covered that pretty much everything. Um, one person did ask in the chat about deleting a list that you've, you've created. So not getting rid of the preset, but just like as an example, deleting the, the test list or our tutorial list there. 
Yeah, so you can either uh, click the three dots here, click delete here, that would delete it. Also, if you go over to this menu, the same three dots, uh, you're able to click delete. Uh, it will make sure that you actually want to, and we can go ahead and sadly delete my Richard watch list. So Diane asks, so will this last feature, the live screen into DeepList, will this continuously keep the DeepList updated uh, with all the changes of the screen every day? Yes, it will be live. So it's updating just like you're running the screen um, and it will be continuously updating the names in that list uh, to reflect the current screen results. Yeah, Perfect. so it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't save the results. So that pure momentum screen that Richard just uh, just ran. So those are all of the stocks that met the criteria of that screen today. And then so throughout the day, that list would have updated with the 117 tickers that are now on it. So that's showing results because the market is closed now that occurred today. When he comes back to that screen tomorrow morning and the market opens, it will refresh, go back to zero. And then as names meet the criteria of that screen throughout the day tomorrow, it will then update the list. Yeah. So if I wanted to, you know, save the results of this screen today, what I'd want to do is create a new deep list called Pure Momentum uh, 95. Create that. Then I'd want to copy all the symbols on this list by clicking this drop down menu, scrolling all the way down to get all the results. Then I want to go up here um to you know you can either copy symbols if you want to do it that way or you can go ahead and click this and then click this new watch list which we created and now this list here is unlinked to any screen uh this is, will always be saved in this state while this one will be updating live when you know the, the market opens tomorrow all right any other questions related to DeepList? This would be the perfect time to ask. Hopefully I didn't go too fast through everything. I guess that means we did a great job. Yeah, I guess so. So Jake asks, uh, renaming the favorites list. You can't do that right now. Uh, maybe we'll introduce that feature in, in the future, uh, that feature in the future, yep. And you also can't rename the universe list. And we've got the special icon, the planet, to, to differentiate it as well. So our special ones have these differentiating icons. Awesome, Anna, glad, glad to hear this uh, cleared some things up. Any other questions about uh, Deep List Anna that uh, you'd like to ask? Mickey, uh, all annotations should save automatically. Uh, Chris, uh, I would recommend going over to uh, the charting webinar first, and we'll be doing another one of those soon. And, and maybe Tyler, you can answer that as well in the chat. Uh, okay, so Anna, uh, let us know if you see that behavior, but uh, I think pretty much you should be set at this point. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Uh, MNK asks, if you want to delete stocks you assigned to a colored list, or when you hit delete, will it go back to being renamed red list or whatever color it was? Uh, if you delete stocks on this list, this is my focus list for today, uh, what it does is it removes that from that color. Good question. how to tie a deep list to a screen covered. So yeah, Robbie. so what you wanna do, it's worth showing again, go to the screen that you'd like to convert to a deep list and have it update automatically. And then you wanna click whatever screen it is, you wanna uh, favorite it over here within your screener. And let's go ahead and do power 21 this time, click the star. And now there's an automatic power 21 a screen that's been created with all those live results. Good question. All right. 
I think that's pretty much it when it comes to the deep list. Uh, we'll be doing th this webinar again. So if you have any remaining questions, please reach out uh, and ask either in Discord or in that future webinar. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, I guess, Tyler, we've got a little bit of time. Do you want to open it up to kind of general questions at this point? Yeah, absolutely. I've already been answering a couple general questions in um, in the chat. I saw there was a question about layout and indicator settings. Um, so we did a, a whole webinar on that a couple of weeks ago. I'll post the recording uh, again so people can watch that because we, we covered that in detail. And we'll do another charting webinar Tuesday tutorial um, in the next couple of weeks for anyone else that's uh, that's a subscribe. Great. So at this point, if you have any questions at all, we'd happy to answer them. Uh, where are the posted webinars? Uh, Tyler, do you have any updates on that? Yeah, so for, for right now, these uh, subscriber only webinars that aren't open to the, the general public, um, the recordings go into our Discord community um, usually pretty quickly. And then, um, we do post them on YouTube, um, but you need the, the direct links to, to get to those. Um, they're not public facing. What we are working on is a place on our DP website uh, to put all the webinar recordings so that they're easily accessible for, for everyone. So that is in the works right now. Yep, perfect. And uh, one actually actual uh, thing that we should definitely mention is when you create a new deep list, let's go ahead and create test. And let's go ahead and uh, add a few names to that test. You can see uh, by default, it's adding the column setting that's recommended. If you'd like to switch that col data column layout that's related to this watch list in particular, uh, you can go ahead and click this drop down menu and assign whatever, whatever other column set uh, you'd like to. But if you'd like to switch that up, uh, you definitely can. But you'll have to do that the first time you uh, create a new deep list. All right. Um, let's see here. Raya, I see a question in the chat about the momentum indicators. Do you want to answer that in the chat? The breath indicators. Yes, Robbie, you can you can set uh, the column set uh, whatever column set you'd like to. Uh, you can assign it to each deep list. So you can have a unique one for, for each deep list. Yep. Yeah, Jake, that's a good point. You can move them around by dragging and dropping. And yeah, we already showed the scroll functionality. Uh, it's definitely really handy to, to navigate between each of these deep lists. So thank you, Jake. Yeah. So there's your answer on breath indicators. We've got a lot of cool indicators coming very shortly. All right. I think with that, uh, we'll call it for today. Uh, thank you guys all for tuning in. We'll be doing this every single week. Um, so thank you guys for your questions and, and for joining us. Hopefully this is helping you um, onboard into DeepView and getting the most out of the platform. Um, again, we want to make it the, the best possible software out there and make sure you guys have success with it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and, uh, we'll see you guys around, uh, in discord on Twitter, as well as in DFU itself. So thank you guys all for, for joining. If, uh, if you aren't in the discord community, uh, just reach out to hello at dfu.com and we'll get you set up with the link and, and get you into that community. Um, it's a great place to stay up to date on the features that are upcoming announcements from the team, uh, and just uh, chat with, uh, with other subscribers. So definitely uh, come join us there. Yeah. And Tyler, Tyler answers about uh, 50,000 live questions every day. So he's a tremendous resource that you should uh, that you should make the most out of. So, yeah, definitely join the discord. And uh, yeah, with that, have a great rest of your evening, everybody. Take care.